Hi, this is Mark. Congratulations. You have found this amazingly awesome show. Chances are you're listening to it right now on whether it's iTunes or Stitcher Radio or some other mobile app that allows you to stream this amazingly awesome show to your ear holes. And I can't stress how awesomely amazing the show really is. But did you know that you can also catch the latest episode of this show on the Tangibound Network? That's right. Go check out TangiboundNetwork.com. You can look them up and you can listen to it right there. It's even mobile friendly. What more could you ask for? Which means you can pull it up on your iPhone or your Android, even your Windows phone. Yeah, who has one of those? But still, point remains, you can do it. You can do it. Check it out. TangiboundNetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. Check it out. To the last drop Are you gonna blow your head off Take good aim and don't forget to duck A light sucks every Monday And all the way to Sunday But I wouldn't have it any other way I don't care how you're doing What's up or how's it hanging I'd like to buy this world one last drink And life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to the crazy life, everyone. Uh, my name's Jen. I am your hostess. Um, to those who have been listening, welcome back. To those new listeners, welcome to the show. Um, very, very excited to have everybody listening in. Um, special thank you to our guest last week. Um, you know, we thanked him very well during the show, but uh, even now, I just listened back. Back and it was so awesome to have Neil on the show and to do all that. So check out um, Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks, his show, and check out our last episode uh, featuring Neil and uh, all that good jazz. So with that being said, how are you guys? We got Brian and Hannah with us as always. How's you guys doing? Hello. Hi. So how has the week been? Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, why don't you go first? Because I think Hanno has uh, had quite the week. Yeah, mine's <laughs> yeah, mine's been pretty average for the most part. It's not been, you know, again, nothing special. I've realized the last week, though, like the last couple weeks, I know I've come on here and I'll be like, you know, I don't know if it's this or if it's this that I'm dealing with, but I've realized that I'm, I've been in a really bad downswing the last few weeks yeah. and I'm, I don't know, I'm still right in the middle of it, you know, just not wanting to get out of bed and just laying in there. Like I'm finally getting out of bed because it's like, I have to eat, you know, otherwise I'd probably just, you know, turn over and go back to sleep or just lay there. So that's been fun. Um, but other than that, you know, nothing really, um, uh, Nothing really major or anything going on. So, you know, and I realized that recognized it. What are you doing to help counteract it? That's the problem is that nothing seems to be really doing anything. So Mm -hmm. I I don't really, I don't really have much that I can counteract it with, you know, like I don't have, you know, like I've been doing the podcast, but I've been canceling on a few other things and you know, uh, not wanting to like, not wanting to leave the house. I just haven't felt like it. And I don't know, you know, it's been, you know, a little bit since I was, uh, since I've been out of the house even. So it's been like a week, week and a half, something like that. You know, yeah, it was not this past Saturday, but Saturday before was the last time I think I've been out of the house. So have you talked to your doctors? No, because I can't, 
I, I can't go see them or anything. And, you know, so there isn't really anything they can do without me going in and my insurance won't cover me going in. So I'm in a holding pattern until, you know, either I go to this other place or, or the end of the, you know, the beginning of the year at the beginning of the year, then all my stuff resets and then I can start scheduling therapy and, uh, appointments again. So I don't know. We'll see. I, it's not bad. It's not like, you know, I'm not having like suicidal thoughts or I'm not into anything anywhere near that dark. It's, it's just more that it's just like this. It's just a heavy dread, you know, <laughs> like yeah. kind of a thing. And, uh, but that's bad enough. Maybe you need to look yeah. into going to, um, that place that they recommended for you. Yeah. In the meantime, and just, I know you don't want to start over, but yeah. maybe they can, uh, uh, adjust your medicine. Yeah. Um, you know, take a look at the co- the course of action the doctors have you on already, and adjust your medicine. I would just, I would hate to see you. We're going into um, some pretty heavy duty holiday season, and I would hate to have you go through this the season, which is difficult to begin with. Yeah. Already feeling rough. Yeah. You know, so it's, I know it's tough to get yourself to do it, but I think it's worth it for you to, to seek out uh, help where you can get it. Yeah. I know I've been really thinking about that anyway. So it's, it's something I've been kind of thinking of doing. It's just, you know, and I, like, I've tried to do stuff, you know, to distract myself and whatnot, but it's, it's really tough. You know, when you're in the middle of it, it's, it's just hard to do. So, yeah, that's it, though. I can't really think of anything else that stands out, so. All right. Well, before we go into Heno, I'll give everybody a brief uh, a brief rundown of, of my week. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. Um, I had an appointment at the courthouse, and life lifed me. I ended up falling outside the courthouse and bloodying up my knee, which was fun, and making a fool of myself, which was even funner and uh, more fun, whichever the proper English is on that. But uh, yeah, so that was that was entertaining. Um, I went to a wedding that was awkward and managed my way through it, which was a good thing. Um, yeah, it. it Going to a wedding where people don't like the groom makes for a very <laughs> odd feeling wedding. Oh, I bet. <laughs> it's just, it just feels weird. Cause usually weddings are like super, super lovey dovey and everyone's excited and happy and all this. It just felt weird. The entire evening felt weird. So yeah, that was, that was unique, but. On the flip side, I've kind of, um, I felt good because I managed through everything. And I really think that I'm starting to come down from the mania. Um, I slept eight hours straight yesterday, which is a huge thing for me. Haven't been able to do that in quite a while. So mm-hmm. I was very excited. Um, so I'm thinking I'm slowly starting to get back to my own self, which is a good thing. It, Stinks because it is fun being super, super cracked out and hyper, <laughs> but, um, but I know it's, it's better for my health and it's better for me to get back to my normal state, which is good, which is solid. So things are slowly starting to even out a bit, which is where it should be. And, uh, and we'll talk some more about the subject matter of the show and, uh, and some of the, the things that happened to kind of support that. But before we get going too far into that, I know Hannah, you've had quite the, quite the week. How are you doing, bud? More like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. It's been a, it's been a little bit. Yeah. It, it's uh nothing horrible. It's, it's, it's stuff that I already talked about just financial things kind of yeah. coming to a, coming to a head and being, um, I guess more of a frustration than anything else. But the one thing that was really, uh, this is an amazing thing, but it's amazing how, uh, for me, it was 
I guess a, a little surprising, um, but it makes sense. My reaction to my parents wanting to help me re- do something for my house, and okay. they 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 we've had this on the kind of um, on the burner f- since the summertime, uh, and we decided that we wanted to take i have one window in the front room that i'm sitting in and it's like three feet by six feet and the idea was what if we put a bay window there and that'll allow a lot more light in it gives the dogs a place to sit you have a little bench you know they can look at the world and Mm -hmm. you're kind of changing around the house and it's going to be a little more involved because you know you got to take it into consideration the snow and all that kind of stuff like that so i finally got a contractor out that i trust and that i know and that i could get here because <laughs> it's just cranking in our town so i didn't even get return calls oh, but wow. and i knew that they're they're top notch they i know them from from where i work and and you know we're a high end place and and they go with they don't give you estimates they give you a budget right I see. right so they sit down they say these are all the costs well, when I finally got the 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 spreadsheet that literally it it's basically every contingency that's possible. They're basically coming in saying this is if everything went wrong, this is how much it's going to cost. And it was $16,000. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Oh. Whew. And, you know, the window itself is almost two grand. So I figured, okay, the window could be seven or $8,000 and then they have to do some roof work. And so, you know, I finally had to call my mom. And what was great is she kind of expected it to be 10 to 12. So I'm like, okay, it's not that much of a shock to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. To you, it's like double. Sat there with a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so at some point. And, and I just called it fifteen grand, you know, because I I know Bill, I I know how they do things. Everything's everything there makes sense, and there's a lot of things that they put in that we won't have to deal with. Like they have like renting a porta potty, they can use our bathroom, yeah. you know. Doing certain interior work, I'll take care of that myself. Cleaning up the site every day, you don't have to do that. You know, we, yeah. we can just clean it up once when you're done. Various things like that. So you know, there's going to be savings. But when I was talking to my mom, my, my mom looks, I just hear, hear her, I hear my dad in the background. My dad says, you know, how much is it? And my mom says, it's $15,000. And, and I hear my dad in the background just say, sounds good. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> my like, anxiety just went to the roof. Like, well, I, sure. I was tingling. Like, my body was electrified. And it was this, it was bizarre. Like, it, it, it was free. I just felt like it was, it was anxiety, mm-hmm. but it yeah. wasn't from fear. Like nothing bad was about to happen to me. Yeah. Right. And, you know, like I, I told you guys last week, I called Neil the next day and we were actually I actually called him to talk about something else, but I brought this up. And in the conversation, I realized that I'm playing old tape in my head. I'm thinking about all the times in the past when my parents did something for me and I either didn't pay it back or I didn't do this or I didn't do that. Um, all those things where I feel like I still owe them. Right. And the fact that the matter is, is my parents aren't even thinking about any of that right now. Right. They well, want to help me with my house. They want to do something. That's it. They are completely in the moment and I'm not. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm having the whole, whole, I'm not worthy of this stuff. I'm playing old tape. That's where the anxiety was coming from. Mm. And like, and I mean, I was freaking out when I came home because that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, we talk about say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole new line. Right. You know? That's <laughs> tough to do in yeah. that say, situation for anyone, I'm sure. Oh, my gosh. 
you know, and, and where we're at right now is, you know, the deposit is $5,000. I signed the paperwork. My mom transferred the money in my account and I'm stroking a check tomorrow and handing it to the contractor. The window's ordered. It's coming. And I know Bill's going to do everything he can to keep that price down. Mm -hmm. I know they will. Yeah. But it was still like, uh, yeah. And now it's getting a little more exciting and things are getting paid off and getting ready to go. And then at the same time, my mom said, and if you, you know, so my truck had a leak and I fixed it. I, I noticed the leak again. And this time I realized a bolt had broken off of my four wheel drive transfer case. Uh, and I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm selling this thing. Cause there's a leak from the power steering. There's a, this, that doesn't work. And a, that doesn't work. And, and it's like, we need a new car. Yeah. And where, where, I, where I'm going back to is this thing that I've, we talked about where I said, I don't want to be 50 and have this much debt. Mm-hmm. Well, what hit me is, is I can't even buy a car right now. I mean, I can, I can go, you know, I could go to a used car lot and buy a, a cheap car. Yeah. That's not this. I know I can do that. Mm-hmm. However, I feel like I should be able to go onto a new car lot right now and buy a car. Cause I need it. Mm-hmm. It's like, I have the income but I have so much debt that I almost can't, that I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that also just brought me back to the whole, you know, I'm worthless and I'm a piece of garbage and blah, 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 blah again. Mm-hmm. And just, and so the reason I, you know, I, I called Neil was, was like, I just went, well, this is it that I got to sell the truck listed, got the truck listed. Of course, just getting low balled left and right, you know, just, <laughs> ugh, just like, yeah. so that one, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually, uh, tomorrow I'm going to start replacing the transfer case myself because I'm just getting low balled. And I had a guy come out and look at, it. he's like, well, it's going to be a thousand dollars to fix it. My mechanic, I'm like, you can fix it yourself. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, the price is $5,000. It's below the book value. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, here's the, here's the book value right here. It's almost six grand. Yeah. It's like, no, I, you know, I, and besides if I want to give you a deal, get in line. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, uh, I have a, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've have called me or whatever. So, anyhow, long story short on that is like we, we had a, we we actually found a car that we want to get. We actually, I actually had a chance to get one last Friday, and I went down to give him a deposit to hold it for a week, and it got sold that day. I was like, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. So t- today's topic is going to be great for that. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the, the 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 part that was amazing is my mother at on top of talking to her about fifteen thousand dollars of window work she's like well we can loan you the down payment you need until you can sell your truck and I'm like no 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 that's not necessary and then I almost took him up on it yeah. like I said the car got sold I wasn't able to but I, I I pretty much I looked at all my studio gear and I'm finally like like I, I recently did a song for for. Uh, Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks, mm. you know, for Neil's podcast. I use n- none of this gear that I have to my right in this rack. And it's a lot of ex- expensive stuff. I use none of it. Yeah. Because it was just easier to plug into the stuff I have right in front of me that's not as good yeah. or supposedly not as good. Right. Well, yeah. it sure seemed to work just fine. Yeah, it, it sounded good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it sounds good. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't have None the same ear know. with this stuff. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. It sounded fine you to don't, me. You don't care that I didn't go through this, this preamp or compressor or whatever. You have, you know, and that's what Neil yeah. helped me with. I mean, I will now, but you know. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. Now, I'd be like, oh my now god, listen to that bass tone. Yeah. Listen to that. Oh, I won't yeah. even listen to it now. I don't want to sully my ears with it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't soil yourself. Yeah. So well, I, I finally hit, I, I, you know, like I mentioned to you guys a couple weeks ago, as I said, you know, I, I'm just really, I was just really down, but I felt determined. It's finally like that push I needed. And I got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. And it was funny after the last podcast, I literally like jammed during the podcast. I found out that I'd sold a mic and I ran to Kinko's or uh, office, whatever depot with like 15 minutes to spare to get a box. So I could ship it the next <laughs> Day. <laughs> right. You know, it's funny. But, uh, d- down but determined is is actually if you're gonna be down, that's a good place to be there. You know, absolutely. because at least when you're determined, you're like, 
you know, it's like if someone's holding you down and you're like, I'm not going to just lay here. I'm going to get out of this, you know, and, and that's, yeah. that's kind of what you're, yeah. yeah. So it's a good launching and, point. <clears throat> yeah. And like this week, the, like I said, I was, I'm like, you know what? I went onto YouTube. I watched a video. I went, I can do this transfer case repair myself. Mm. You know, I'll get, I'll take that off the plate. And then my alternator stopped working. Oh, <laughs> I was geez. like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> you know? But, and so, I, you know, once again, I'm like, okay, that's about a hundred bucks. Well, here's a microphone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. D- done. I'm just, it's like, it's time to just do what needs to be done. And, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll get the truck sold. And we, you know, we're, we were really kind of for a while, they're a little desperate to get a new car. And now it's like, no, we'll, we'll sell the truck. That'll be a down payment. We'll get a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, whatever. It is. And in the meantime, I paid off my dental bill that I've had for three years. Awesome. Like seven grand worth of uh, dental yeah, work I, finally I on gone. Uh, right? Good. You know, little victory like, hey, off the table. That's and a so big victory. That's not a little victory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, it's, a big, yeah. that's a big it's a victory. Yeah. You know, so. that's something you've been carrying for years that you were able to get off your plate. Yeah. That's something that's pretty big. Make sure you celebrate that. Well, too, the, the, and the other, like selling the gear, like you said, too, the, the great part about that stuff, I'm, I'm going to assume anyway, is that you can sell it now to do something else. And then down the road, if you find yourself in that position that you do want or need that, you could reacquire those things, you know? And that's the, that was the main thing. And that's what, uh, the last thing I wanted to say about talking to Neil is one of the reasons I called him is I said, you know, I, I, these are these are the things I do retail therapy wise, right? Mm-hmm. This is one of the things I do to sabotage myself. I don't drink anymore. I I, I have enough. Um, I've done enough work that I know I'm not going to pick up a drink no matter how bad things get. But I have Good. no qualms about doing a little retail therapy <laughs> in the afternoon and spending a bunch of money that I don't have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's one of my self destructive behaviors, mm-hmm. and I'm dealing with it right now. And I one of the the things I asked Neil is I said, well, can, will you be the guy that I can that I can send a text messages to and say, I feel like I need this. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm accountable with my with my with with my alcoholism. Yeah. Yes. I'm accountable. I have people that I will call up in a heartbeat if I'm not feeling right. But I have never established that same level of accountability when it comes to financial matters. Yeah. And 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 and. And doing things that I know are not, they're not helping me. Yeah. And so that, that was a really good thing is, is to me, you know, that I went into action enough where it's starting to, you know, like we always talk, talk about, it's like sometimes it's just getting that snowball rolling mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and you know, it's rolling. And that's why I, I, I'm looking forward to Friday and being under my car and banging knuckles and getting greasy, <laughs> which I didn't want to do two weeks ago because I really wanted it to just go away. Yeah. Right. Cause that's where my head was at then was like, you know, just get rid of all the stuff. Right. You know, and it's like, no, but now you're, you're essentially doing staging on your, on the truck, you know, like in houses where people will buy things just to get the house to sell. You're kind of doing <laughs> the same thing because it'll sell better. Mm-hmm. You know, if yeah. it's this and this are functional versus like right now, if you're like, hey, the alternator doesn't work, it needs this bolt. Like you said, all you're going to get is people going, look, I'm going to have to spend a bunch of time and money to fix this. I really don't want to pay anywhere yeah. near what you're asking. Yeah, it's. Yeah. And this way I can. And now now when people ask me, what's your bottom dollar? I said what well, it's listed. And I and every time I fix something, that price becomes even more firm. Yeah. So if you want a deal, come get it. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's awesome. So, so you took a step back. You acknowledged the feelings, sat in the feelings, let yourself feel. Then you moved past it, enlisted your support group, and started taking action after assessing all of the all the options. I think you handled it pretty darn good, mm-hmm. sir. Well, thank you. And the other yeah. thing that I'm doing that's new is I. Uh, Sharon and I are in this together right now. A hundred percent. We want to, she was going down and looking at financing for herself and blah, blah, blah. And, and for her, cause what I was going to do is I was going to take the money from the truck, buy her a car. Cause I like her car. Mm. And yeah. then she was going to buy her own car. Well, I don't know. You know, we, we, we have our own 
credit issue histories. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I finally just came to this realization. It's like, no, we're doing this together. We are buying a new car Yeah, for us. Sure. And and that is, that is a big hurdle in this solo (laughs) dude. Yeah, it is. The perpetual bachelor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because one of my biggest things was, is am I, how am I going to do with sharing finances? Mm Mm-hmm. And 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 I've turned this corner where I finally realized this is worth it for us and for our future. And and like and she's great. She says, "Is this something you feel like you have to do or that you want to do?" Yeah. And I can say with a hundred percent certainty, I want to do this. Awesome. That's you know, and 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 it huge. it feels so good because having a lifetime of doubt about whether I can even, you know be with somebody, mm-hmm. let alone do the things that I need to do and take the steps that I need to take. I have I always, I've had a lifetime of doubt in that regard. And to have some things just kind of come together finally is, you know, it, it's, it's, it's big. These are the, these are the, to me, this is the part of where I feel like, Oh wow, it's taking me this long. So what? Yeah. I get to You're feel it salty. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, who cares how long it took? That's right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like I'm happy to have the feeling today. It's like finishing your first marathon. You know, doesn't matter if it took three days to finish it or if you set a world yeah. record. It's like the first one. You know, not obviously from there you're going to worry about time more. But the first one, it's like I did it. I finished it. You know, yeah. or I I've gotten here. So it's yeah. Yeah. So definitely, you know, I'm sitting here saying, why didn't I do this 20 years ago? Or I wish I did this 20 years ago. Yeah. No, I'm not. No. I'm just happy I get to feel it today. Yeah. Well, and it took you 20 years to get to this point. Right. And that's the important, you know, it's never about the destination. It's always about the journey. And you needed to go on that journey. Yeah. And another huge, huge piece of that Mm -hmm. is trust. I mean, that's. That was a huge thing for me, and it still is a huge thing for me. Big time. Yeah. I'm married now, and I have to fully 100% trust this person, this other person. I could always rely on me because I knew what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now I have to trust that this person is going to hold up their end of the bargain. Yep. When they say that they're going to make a payment, I have to trust they're going to make that payment. Yep. You know, if not, we're both screwed. You know, it's no longer me making mistakes and making errors for me. It's us making errors for each other. Yeah. Us making wins for each other. So it's, it is, it's a huge step to step outside of the solo being only responsible for you and your actions and have in trusting that somebody else is going to be there and step up. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's it's huge, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, part of our vows, you know, part of Dan's vows that he shared with me, he is that he will always come through, and that's a huge thing for me. He said that he will always come through. It may take him a little longer sometimes than than I may like, but he will always come through. Yeah, and. That's a really it's a big huge deal. Thing. It's a that huge statement. Thing. Yeah, that statement alone is is, is uh, it's a level of commitment. Mm. Yes. That that all right? Yeah, they're words. However, you know, you're saying it. Are you just saying it, or are you believing it? And that was always has always been my fear. Yeah. Is Me that too. that I'm just saying the words? Yeah. Yeah, you know that I don't that and and I think that's where some of my motivation is coming from right now, is that I I I feel like I'm not in this alone. Yeah, yeah, and that was also one of the reasons why, like you know, was, I, I I talked to Neil and 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 he shared his experience, and this is where this is where some of the things that. One of the things that I talk about a lot on here is engaging with people and talking to people. And, and this is why, you know, we talked a little bit about group last week and yeah. being in group sessions where this is important is you, I got to hear, I got to hear somebody else say, Oh yeah, I do that too. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
you do. Okay. Well, maybe we can help each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. It's it is. It's a big deal. And it, it helped me in a huge way to have somebody say, oh, well, you know, especially since usually when we're in a position when we need help, we think that the other person, you know, we'll call someone that we think is is different than us. And then we find out, no, they're really not that much different. Yeah. We're all a little bit the same. And we can all help each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah very much. Some. Yeah, exactly. It It is. I mean, I just, I go back to the analogy of, you know, the dinner table and the big forks. And I'm sure I've said yeah. it on the show a couple times. But it's it's that you have to sometimes when you can't feed yourself anymore, you have to turn around and feed the person next to you and they can feed you and you can both be satisfied. Mm. And it just and it's so tough to do because the first thing that you automatically want to do when you are self-preservation mode is me, 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 me. How am I going to get me OK to take a step, step back and say no. It doesn't have to be all about me. If I'm in need, somebody else can help me and I can help them. And together we will succeed. And it's, oh, it's such a huge, huge piece. But once you can get there, it's, it's amazing. And some days you're not going to be able to get there. And some days you are going to resort back to the me, 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 because that's what we do. But knowing that you have your support system that's there to step in and say, I'm going to help you, you know, and that's, it's just, oh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Well, and especially well, if, it's, if it's, if it's, if especially if it's mm-hmm. money based too, you know, because, oh, gosh, yes. you know, who hasn't had financial struggles or, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of people do retail therapy, you know, I, like there's a lot of stuff that you'll find people identify with so easily, you know, and, but it is, it is funny how we, we a lot of times hide and don't want to talk, talk about it, you know, like when I filed bankruptcy, I didn't want to talk about it because it's embarrassing, you know, but it's amazing how many people I've told, oh yeah, blah, blah, bankruptcy. And they're like, oh yeah, I filed like five years ago. And you know, it's like, oh, you know, like you just hear so many people Uh that have, and it's, you know, you're like, oh, it's not, as big of a deal, I guess, you know? <laughs> so in, in the 12 step program I do for financial stuff, one of the things that it's a, it's a reading, it, it talks about like aversion to what should be a normal conversation about money. Yeah. Mm. You know, like, like you just, you're unable to have, a, and I, I, I know there are people out there that just sit there and they go, what are you talking about? You know, but the fact of the matter is, is I meet lots of people who who literally don't pay attention to how much money they have. They don't mm. pay attention to their bills. They uh, it, like it's. I saw a special on TV, and, and, and I think and and they run businesses. Oh yeah, I I saw a thing they had on the local news here. There it was some app that basically, and they were like, "Oh, this app will help you uh, realize where you're wasting money or whatever," and. um I and so I'm watching this, and the the one guy that they were like, yeah, we saved this guy how much ever money, and the guy was like, yeah, I've been paying for a gym membership. I totally forgot about. It. I'm like, how do you like that's twenty or so do- dollars a month? How do you just not notice that money going anywhere? And it's like probably because yeah. you have plenty of money, so mm-hmm. you you don't see twenty dollars. But that also tells me yeah. you're not paying attention to your bills because. You know, clearly you should look at that and go, what? Yeah, like, why is X Jim taking this money from me? Oh, yeah, I have a membership there. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but there were a few people in that. Automatic. You yeah. Know, when you're not writing those checks, it's amazing how things come yeah. and go out of your checking account and you don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, well, that being said, I mean, gosh, that was a lot. Yeah, that's been. Yeah. That's Thanks awesome. for letting me download, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's. I mean, it's. Yeah, my my brain is is boggled. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is something that has been um, 
afflicting us, shall we say, I guess is a good word, um, for the for the last little bit. Um, I think all three of us have had our share of, uh, of we're going to be talking about is uh, disappointment. So in a variety of different ways, um, there's disappointment is, is, it's a, it's hard to, to come up with quite the right words because it's a feeling and feelings are nouns. Um, they're to be experienced and, but they're not action verbs, action words. They're nouns. And I think we have to keep that in mind. So just like, um, any other feeling of happy, sad, disappointment, it's all about how we react to these things. You feel them, they're there, they exist, but how you handle them and what you do with them, that is the actions, that is the verbs, and that is where the the work lies, shall we say. Um, for me, my disappointment recently has been in uh, the business setting, Um I did not get the job that I wanted to get and and it's tough to process it and to deal with it because those feelings of it's not fair, the feelings of I, I'm better than this. I deserve this. The self-righteousness is there. Um, the, all of these emotions all pop up around disappointment and it's interesting how how they all come about, and then you have to figure out a way to go past them, to move past them, which we have a hard time doing as humans. And uh, I found a great article that kind of talks about it. Um, the article is from IQ Matrix, which is an interesting website, and I highly recommend uh, um checking it out. It's IQ Matrix 300 plus self growth mind maps. And the article is how to overcome disappointment and refocus on your goals. Starts with a a really interesting quote. It says the size of your success is measured by the strength of your desire and how you handle disappointments along the way. So, I think that's pretty darn accurate. Mhm. Um, you know, it, it is, it's life, life is the journey. It is not the destination as we've mentioned many, many times on the show and along the journey, there will be disappointments. There will be falls. There will be letdowns and how you handle them makes all the difference in the world. And I think Heno is a perfect example of, of how you can handle a disappointment and turn around and make it into something that is a positive and not necessarily a negative based upon your actions so great example Heno. <laughs> so the article starts with are you feeling disappointed disappointment is an experience of feeling of let down and somewhat defeated you held high expectations that something would work out your way but unfortunately things don't turn out as expected you are now holding on to an unsatisfactory outcome and finding it difficult to deal with your unfulfilled promises and expectations Feeling disappointed in the short term, however, can actually be quite advantageous. However, wallowing in disappointment can keep you feeling stuck, can lead to doubt, despair, depression, despondency, and discouragement in the long term. That is a lot of these folks. (laughs) I am shocked that I was able to get them out without spitting on myself. So, that being said, this is especially true when you've experienced a series of disappointments Disappointments over a short period of time. These disappointments are weighing heavily on your shoulders. As a result, you get overrun by negative thoughts and other emotions. In fact, you might even catch yourself saying, I'm just not good enough. Nothing ever works out. This always happens to me. Q. Brian. What's yep. this all from? <laughs> distorted thinking. <laughs> yep. Yay! Distorted thinking worksheets. Yep. So, disappointment can lead to a bunch of bad, bad things from the distorted thinking worksheet. So what are we going to do? How are we going to deal with this? Step one, acknowledge how you feel about the situation. That is the step one for every single emotion, folks. Mm -hmm. 
acknowledge it. Yep. If you don't acknowledge it, it will beat you up and it will keep coming back and it will consistently exist until you acknowledge it and you deal with it. So, first step is to acknowledging your personal feelings about the situation and circumstances. If you're disappointed, then admit it openly and honestly. Hiding your disappointment will just prevent yourself from moving forward. So, how many of us, which I'm sure you guys will agree with me on this, have said, oh, it's all right. No big deal. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we all do because mm-hmm. it it takes a lot of vulnerability to say, no, that really sucks. Yeah. That I didn't, you know, that, that hurt. <laughs> yeah. That really hurt. That, that kind of kicked me where, where I wasn't expecting, you know, it, yeah, that's a, that's a bitter pill to swallow and, and very hard to do sometimes is own our feelings and acknowledge to the world, you know, it, yeah. And it, in very public form. I think one thing I always look back to is it amazes me in sports how how coaches and players deal with the amount of pressure and stress and disappointments. I mean, not only do they fail sometimes, but they fail on a huge level Mm -hmm. you know can you imagine the feeling of that player as he misses a catch and not only does he have to feel it in that moment but he has to feel it every time a fan mentions it to him (laughs) every time he turns on the tv he has to hear it from his coach he has to watch the video back a million times over to learn what Mm -hmm. he did wrong you know, can you imagine having a mistake you've made and that disappointment of of letting yourself down, letting your team down, played on such a magnitude? Yep. It's I mean, it's basically it you know, pitchers go through it a lot in baseball, you know, they give up home runs or hits or whatever and they have to immediately uh focus back in and be able to throw, you know, to to focus on doing their job again. You know, or a quarterback, you know, throws an interception. They immediately have to throw, you know, go back out there and throw the ball again. Or, you know, like you said, just no matter what the position is, you fail. But, you know, then the next time it's like you have to just go right back out and do it again. You don't – I think in sports you don't really have time until the game's over for – to really hang in it. Maybe a pitcher does because they might get pulled from the game after giving up a home run or something. But most of the time you don't have a lot of – chance to really beat yourself up until after but you're right you know a lot of these guys will review tape some of them don't some of them if there's a big play or they do something they they'll watch it maybe once and then that's it you know um was it uh seth curry or steph curry i'm sorry the uh golden state warriors basketball player after they lost to the Cavs in the finals i think he said he watched the finals once and then it was nope now it's time to put the work in for next year you know, it was just immediately like, okay, I gave myself a chance to watch it, be disappointed. You know, it sucks right now. And now it's like, okay, now it's time to get better for next time. You know, it, it's amazing the resiliency of, of athletes, you know, but it's the mindset you're given from the point that, you know, a little kid up with sports, you know. Well, I think there's a lot to be learned there, um, especially if what if it's you that that doesn't make the mistake? What if you do everything right, yeah. but yet you still lose? Yeah. You know, how do you handle that disappointment? How do you reconcile that and and move past it? I mean, whenever I'm st- I catch myself getting caught up in my own world, I stop and think about that. I'm like, well, at least it's not on a national stage being recorded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. But, you know, I think, I think there's a, you know, kind of like Brian was was touching on is there's a level of training that goes into athletics or, you know, in my case, you know, being a musician and you put in so many hours, you're, you're relying on your, your, your muscle memory, your, your repetition, how many times you've done something. 
And, you know, sometimes things go wrong. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, there's just a, you just, there's a mistake and, you know, you have to get right back at it. And then, like you said, there are those times where you've done, you did everything right. You, you, you did everything you could, but it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And in, in those cases, whether it's, you know, me playing music or playing sports or, uh, you know, doing something at work or whatever it is, those are the times where I could, I can, I can, I can, I can get through that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get past that one because I can, I, I can step back and say, well, I did everything I could. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, you know, was there something that I could have done better? No, I gave him my all. It didn't work out. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. the difference with personal stuff is where we create expectations on ourselves. Yeah. You know, I, it's like saying that me throwing a pass or hitting a ball that I have an expectation or that others have an expectation on me. It's kind of a given, you know, it's kind of a, it's, there's no like, Oh, I'm trying to control the outcome. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, mm. I'm trying to make this happen. Yeah. It's just, it, it's par for the course. It's where I try to control the outcome in my personal life and put a lot of expectations on that are maybe a little inordinate, Little, little too much. That's where it's different. Yeah. Well, but is it so different? Because we spend this time, like you said, you know, practicing, practicing, practicing for the sports, for the music, for performing, for whatever we are practicing for. In life, I think where it throws us off is the stuff that we don't practice for. Yeah, we that, don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That we don't gear ourselves up. We don't. And and I think this, like the article mentions in here, I think a lot of what it's talking about is how to practice for our lives, which I think is a great kind of segue into what they were talking about. Um, they give us a couple questions in this first step. So the first step, acknowledge how you feel about the situation. Um if you're disappointed, then admit openly and honestly. Hiding disappointment will prevent you from moving forward. So some of the keys to help you identify how you're feeling is what really happened here, what should have happened, and why am I feeling disappointed about it? Like in my case, what really happened here, I did not get a job. What should have happened, I should have gotten this job. Why am I feeling disappointed about it? Because I... I don't think it's fair that I didn't get this job. Now that I've clarified what exactly I'm feeling disappointed about in the situation, now I can get a better understanding of my thoughts and expectations. And some of the other questions, what was I thinking at the time when things didn't pan out as, as anticipated? Was I blaming myself or others for certain circumstances? Was I searching for excuses? How have these thoughts hindered me? Well, if you're caught up making excuses, complaining, and not taking responsibility for the situation, then you're just ignoring the real problem. In my case, yeah, I was, I can com I've been complaining. I've been making up excuses. They say I'm not qualified enough. Well, there's nothing I can do about that, you know, and these types of things, these types of thoughts – that's not me advancing myself through, through it. That's I acknowledge the feelings, but I haven't advanced through it. Like with you, Heno, with the car issues and stuff, you know, like you even mentioned, yeah, the car's not working right. You want to get rid of the car. So I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just going to be done with it and move past it. Well, after you got past that, the thought process, you're like, okay, this isn't working. So now I have to go to the next step of how to take this disappointment and make it work for me and make things happen. So well, which that's kind is, of the practice thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is, you know what I mean? Like you just yeah. actually described what I did is, is, well, I had to throw it out there. Mm -hmm. And I had to practice a little mm -hmm. without, and the, the thing is I didn't put too much on it. Yeah. You know, and, and this is unfortunate 
basically what we, you know, when I jumped into buying my first house, I put a lot on those first transactions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're putting everything on it. Just like when I went down to go talk about this car Mm -hmm. and buy this car, you can put a lot on those things. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 but when I can walk in with just the idea of like, well, this is just, this is just a trial run. We'll see what happens. And that's basically what I did is I listed the car and within three days I had a lot of experience to adjust my expectations. Yes. And adjusting those expectations is actually number step two. Question (laughs) your expectations. Great segue. Mm All right. Now that we understand that we're disappointed and now we understand our role in the disappointment. Now question your expectation. It's now time to take a closer look at the expectations expectations you had before these events and circumstances took place. Ask yourself, what were my expectations about these circumstances? What were my expectations about myself? What were my expectations of others involved? Well, my expectations personally about the circumstances were I expected that I would get this job. My expectations about myself, I expected that I had done enough and that I had earned it. The expectation of the others, I expected them to see that I had earned it. (laughs) And I expected them to want to honor my, my work and my, uh, my hard work and, and my commitments. So as you answer these questions, you might realize that maybe your expectations weren't quite flexible or realistic enough. Yeah, I can see that. Continue asking yourself, overall, were my expectations about all these things realistic? I've only been at the job for nine months. Was it realistic for me to be advancing so soon? Probably not. Maybe they were petty or inflexible. At this point... I've been feeling very much the take my ball and go home. That's pretty inflexible. Mm -hmm. Maybe my expectations were too narrow minded. My expectations did was to get this specific job. Maybe that's a little narrow minded. Maybe I need to open my mind to other opportunities, other ways of growing within the same company. Maybe my expectations were downright selfish. It's all about me. I want this job. Is this job really the, is me in this job the best move for the company? Is me in this job the best move for my coworkers? Maybe not. Right. Maybe I'm thinking about this only from my perspective and not the perspective of others involved. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Which is, you know, really typical Um, when people are going through disappointment. That's it. That really is, you know, it, it, it puts you in a very selfish place, you know? Yes, it does. Yeah. Even if well, you don't mean for it to, it does. Yeah. That's the controlling the, the outcome kind of thing that I've realized for myself where I've already figured out why everyone else should line right up ba- <laughs> with my expectations based on what I've been thinking in my own head. Yes. Like I've rationalized the whole thing and figured out why I deserve this or why this should go this way. And I'm not just talking about I figured out my own side of it. I figured out everyone else's side too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so when and when they come in they and they and they give me the answer that I didn't expect, I go, Yeah, but you're you're not thinking right about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's yeah. that's where my greatest disappointments always were, is where I had somehow fabricated in my head the entire scenario before I even walked into it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I so did this, did that with this situation, a hundred percent. Like, no, 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 you guys don't understand. You know, <laughs> this is not, no, don't no. Don't you know who I am? Yeah. Exactly. Do you know what it reminds me of? You don't, it it's reminds me of. big picture here. It reminds me of when you're watching like an American Idol type of show. You know, someone walks in, in their head, they're going to just crush their song. The judges are going to love them. They're going to go on to win American Idol. You know, and and you do kind of have to have that mentality when you're going into a competition. I'm going to win. 
Like you don't go into the, you shouldn't go into these going, well, you know, if I make the top four, that's good. Forget that. You go in, I'm going to win. And you know, so Mm -hmm. the person gets in there, they sing. And then the judges are like, eh, you know, you're not, you're just not right for this. And then the people are like, well, I was just nervous. Let me, let me sing another song. And they're like, eh, we can't do that because then we have to let everybody sing like five songs. And, you know, and they just keep going and going with all these reasons why, they should still basically let them through, you know, and it's like, look, we told you no, yeah. you know, like, it's, you know, and that person is just there. Time to deal with it. Yeah, they're disappointed and they're flailing, you know, to try to get things to line back up. Like Heno said, they're trying to control the situation so that things line back up with that scenario that's in their head because, you know, they've been, they're derailed at step one, essentially, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. When it comes to disappointment, your expectations coming into the situation will determine how you will feel after the events have taken place. Say, for instance, you had no expectations at the beginning of all this. As a result, it wouldn't matter what happened. Because you had no expectations, you have no reason to be disappointed, and consequently, you have seen the situation for what it is and select the best best path moving forward. However, if you're currently feeling disappointed that it's unlikely you took this approach... And therefore, you must now ask yourself one final set of questions. Do my expectations set me up for disappointment? Mm -hmm. And I would say yes. How could they potentially adjust them for next time? You know, I think that's a good question because like what you just mentioned, Brian, and I agree with the fact, and I have actually said to people that um, if I didn't feel I should have the job. I wouldn't apply for. Right. You know, and people who audition and people who go on stage and perform um, and whatever sports and music and just about anything you go for. If it's any sort of competition whatsoever, you should not enter it unless you feel that you will win. Yeah. You know, and disappointment will be part of that. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a good motivating aspect to to both aspects you know to both ends of it um how could i potentially adjust them for next time in my scenario i would say i could have gone into it more open-minded and less self-centered about it i guess i needed a lot of this self-centeredness to get me through it Mm -hmm. yes but I think there was an opportunity for me to be more open-minded and less focused, like laser focused. Just open the focus just a little bit further, I think. So, yeah. And yeah. the last aspect of it, just maybe there's a silver lining here. So in my situation, I can see there is a silver lining going on. Maybe this was going to be a bad fit for me, and they are seeing it before I am. Yeah, there's always you potential know. for that. Hanno, yeah. yeah, and with your car, Hanno, that silver lining, maybe, just maybe, be because you were able to step back and realize that, you know what, you're not getting the result you want. Yeah, it's disappointing, but by stepping back and, and, and taking some extra actions – you will get the result you want. You know, you will sell the truck for the money that you want to sell sell it for. So, yeah, I can see silver lightings there. So your unrealistic expectations are going to prevent you from learning and growing from this experience. You must understand this before moving on to the next step. So now, now that we're open-minded and starting to take a look at silver linings and different aspects... Take the time to learn from the experience. So what can I learn from this experience? What can I learn about myself? What can I learn about my perspective of the situation? What can I learn about how I set expectations? And what can I learn from all of these that will help me approach things differently in the future? Good questions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's, you know, the, the one, the one thing that kind of, um, it really kind of stuck in my head when you said it was like those final group of questions, like the very first one is the, is 
you know, are my expectations setting me up for disappointment? You know, it's like, you know, people, you know, doing something to where I, I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head, but to where you could uh, potentially come into some money or something like that and spending it before you have it. You know, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and you're like, and then the money doesn't come through. Huh? <laughs> Playing the lottery. Yeah, something like that, you know, and it's just, and then when it doesn't come through, you're, you know, all sorts of disappointed, you know, like doing stuff like that. Those are ones mm-hmm. that are easier to uh fix because, mm-hmm. you know, your mm-hmm. expectations are, you know, pie in the sky, but it's like, you know, it's one of those, like, I tr- I've tried for years and years to not, uh, like, in those situations, like, you know, oh, you might be getting the, it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna, what are you gonna do if you, like, I'll worry about it if I do, you know, because it's like, if, yeah. if you start spending, it's just, I know it isn't actually this way, but it always seems that when you start doing those kind of things, things tend to not go through for you, you know, it just feels like that happens, and like I said, things were gonna happen either way. You know, but, um, uh, it's funny how, the, and that'll add to your disappointment, you know, because you expected it. Then you had other expectations. You've then added on top because, oh, well, when I get this money, well, right there's one expectation. Then you go, well, I'm going to buy a new car and I'm going to, or I'm going to buy a new TV or what. And now you're adding, I'm going to do this. And now when that money doesn't come through, not only did you not get the money, but you're not getting the TV, you're not getting the new Xbox or what, you know, so you have a tiling of disappointment to sort through instead of from the beginning, just go, you know, Hey, whatever. And just not worry about, you know, it's like tax returns. You know, some people expect a big one. And then by the time they get their taxes done and whatever, they're like, yeah, you're getting like, you know, a couple hundred bucks. It's like, Oh, well, I guess we're not going to go on that vacation or, you know, and, so, yeah. It's, yeah, you're right. So, you know, one, and, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. One of, one of the things that, now that I'm, I'm, I'm remembering, you know, what I went through to buy the house and my real estate agent really did a great job with me where he sat me down and he said, this is a process. Mm-hmm. And there are periods of time where we're going to be in the process. There's no guaranteed outcome. There's no, you know, and there was something about the way Rick explained it where I realized that part of the process is also sometimes having to step back and and maybe, you know, go around the wall or, you know, find a different way through yep. or we need to comp- we need to find a new entrance and so when when things didn't go as expected and got and sometimes were just downright you know like rudely disappointing, <laughs> yeah, um, I wasn't as flustered by it because you know because Rick would kind of remind me just like some of my coaches sometimes remind me like you know hey are you trying to control the outcome again you know he would say don't for you know we're we're in the process this is part of the process and I think that's something where you know, the old proverbial, you know, don't put all your, what is it? Your eggs, eggs in one basket, yeah. in yeah. one basket. And we do that. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we hitch here. I'll go with another proverb. We hitch our rack <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, and we, and we go, this is the one, this yeah. is it. And we do ourselves a disservice because we don't go in saying, okay, this is a process like that idea of like, this is training. Yeah. The first one might end up being a learning experience. It might not, but mm-hmm. let's look at it as like the first one is going to be the learning experience. It's the draft, it's the dry run, it's whatever it is. And that this might take two or three times. Yeah. And that that really mm-hmm. can help with these expectations and therefore minimize disappointment. You know, and especially when we're, we're relying on others. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. it's funny too, something I want to point out because this disappointment, like you mentioned earlier in the thing, can lead to depression because a lot of times people, if they don't 
if things don't go their way, well, nothing good ever happens to me. Again, distorted thinking mm-hmm. worksheet stuff. You know, if something yeah. bad happens or you deem is bad, you immediately go to worst case scenario or or end of the world type of a thing. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, the other side of this is to be careful to not set your expectations the opposite way to where, oh, nothing good's ever going to happen. You know, don't, don't do that because like, well, if I have that attitude, I can't be disappointed. And it's like, no, you're missing the point. You actually are walking through life constantly disappointed, looking to not be disappointed. You know, there's a, you know, so don't go that far either because that, that is a mindset that a lot of people, especially those suffering from depression will, you know, like I have to fight and fight and fight to not be that way. You know, because I did that for the longest time. It's like, I'm going to prepare for the worst and be surprised by the best or, you know, prepare for the worst, be surprised by basically anything else. And Mm -hmm. it's a really, it works out sometimes, but most of the time, all it does is lead you to just be negative all the time. And it's, it's really not a good mindset, you know? Um, And it it prevents you from seeing the positives. Yeah. You miss wins. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you do. And I think the part of this exercise with the, in this article that they're talking about is understanding how to see the wins through the disappointment. Yeah. Not let, let the disappointment cloud everything, you know, let you see where the potentials are, where the wins are, where's the, the good aspects of things are, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's huge. And speaking of clouds, these questions will help you see through the clouds, opening your eyes to new possibilities and perspectives. Maybe things aren't how they initially seem. Just maybe your disappointment is an illusion. Maybe it's all a figment of your imagination. When you begin approaching the situation from a space of empowerment rather than a space of disappointment, that you will be in a better position to think more clearly and intelligently about what exactly has transpired. As a result, you can move forward through this disappointment with a renewed confidence that you can make the most of any situation, no matter what happens. Hence, Hennel looking forward to working on his vehicle and getting it up to speed so he can get the desired result he wants. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Take a personal inventory is step number four. Now you should fully understand the situation and you should also have clarity about your expectations. Now it's time for you to take a personal inventory by asking, what skills do I have that can help me make the most of the situation? What knowledge do I have that I might be able to use here? What tools do I have to my disposal that could be helpful? What support can I potentially garner from others? And what are my strengths and how can I make the best of them in this situation? My situation, I'm going to be talking with human resources. I'm going to find out what I can do to get the skills that I need to be able to be in the position that I want to be in. And I'm going to ask the new leader, the person who gets the job, how I can help them and how by working with them, they can help me get to where I want to get. Exactly. Yeah. Because that, that's how you grow from it. That's like you said, that's taking the experience and, uh, learning from it, you know, exactly. or, you know, and it still sucks. right. Or turning it into potentially a silver lining. Cause like you said, you know, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's nothing more than just timing isn't right. You know, maybe yeah. there's something about it that you the, just nailed something. Yeah. You know, that you're like, Heno is always talking about, you know, how he's a believer in, um, you're where you're supposed to be, you know? Yeah. And, and I've, I buy into that too. And it's, it, so maybe it's just not, it's just not the time. And you see this a lot with people, whether it's in romance, business, whatever it is, it's just sometimes, or even Heno talking about the car. It's yeah. maybe it's just not the right time for the car, but a few months down the road, the window thing will be That's cleared right. up and out of the way. And, you know, so then you can go, okay, mm-hmm. now let's, you know, maybe it'll have some more equipment sold or what in the truck will be, gone, you know, and everything will just seem clearer, you know, than now where you're steering through, you know, clutter to, to the goal. So, you know, <laughs> that's always something to keep in mind too. In the, 
when you stop and you take a look at the person and, and put things in perspective, you know, this year I got a new job. I got married. I'm in the process of buying a house. Mm. Do I really want to add extra stress of a new job on top of all of that? Yeah. You know, and when you stop and you take a look at different things like that, I can see, I can see that the timing probably is not right for this for me. Mm. I can see all of the different flaws to my logic doesn't make the disappointment instantly disappear by any yeah. stretch. You know, it's still going to be there. Still smarts. It yeah. still stinks. But, well, and but like you said, if you're, I don't feel as bad as I did. Right. And if you end up, you know, like closing on a house and then having, to, you know, you, you're in the, you'd be in the process of moving everything. And then if you take on this job and maybe it leads to where you got to stay a few extra hours here and there or something mm-hmm. else, you know, and then it's like, well, now I don't have time to do that. You know, it's so like you said, it's, you don't know, maybe it's, you know, maybe that's the silver lining in this is that it's just not right right now, you know, so, mm-hmm. but, it, but you've got it, a plan to a, move forward. It's a hard thing to, to, this is something that Sharon and I talked about where she said, you know, when I decide on a pro, on doing something, I, uh, I laser focus on it. I, I want to accomplish it. Yeah. It's part of what we do at our work. It's what we do in so many aspects of our life that, you know, why wouldn't we do that same thing with everything? So it's very hard to suddenly pull back and say, well, you know what? Maybe right now is not the time. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, we figured out what car we want. Well, about three weeks ago, there was a ton of inventory. It's all gone. Mm-hmm. There's not that much inventory right now. And so it became very frustrating. Like we're looking and looking. It's like, okay, we're ready to do this right. And it's like, well, do we have to do it now? Yep. And it was like, no, I can keep working on my truck and, and still drive it every day. It's getting me to work and back. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll do work on it. Eventually it's going to sell. And at that time, we'll look at where the inventory's at. Yeah. And to not, to not, you know, the old shove that square peg into that round <laughs> hole. Right. You yeah. don't need to do that. You know, and, and this all comes back to one thing that I think is very difficult for us is faith. Uh, you yes. know? And patience. Yeah. 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 You and don't. Patience. I mean, patience is a virtue and it's not one that I hold. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't. I mean, I'm just. No, I mean, you know, I completely own, I am not a patient person. And so often and not, I find that more success comes my way, the less I fight. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, it's like the more I let go and let be, if I let go and quit trying to force it and just let myself go with the flow of the river, all of a sudden, I find the fish are coming to me. You know, I'm not having to fight so hard. I'm not having to work so hard. It slowly starts naturally progressing and going its way. Yeah, I'm not moving as fast as I want. Yeah, I'm not getting where I want to get as quickly and as efficiently as possible. But it's so much easier and less stressful mm-hmm. and I, I enjoy it more. And when I I stop and I put things in perspective and I stop and I break things down and say, you know what? Really is this as big of a bad thing as I'm making it out to be in the beginning? Not really. Yeah. It really isn't. And that's, yeah. Go ahead, Brian. No, I was going to say that's, that's what the article is basically saying. And, and, Again, that's mm-hmm. what the distorted worksheets help you find is that, you know, again, when we're a lot of people are faced with adversity of any kind or disappointment or whatever, they immediately go into the, oh, this is the end of the world, you know, and it isn't and it won't be. And you're still going to be there tomorrow and the day after and the day after. And, you know, and it's this is just a bad moment. You know, there's bumps in roads, but the rest of the road is still a road. You know, it doesn't mean you hit a, a bump and that's the end of the road. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, metaphorically, of course, it's, 
You know, what I think is funny is, I know you mentioned about how when you get laser focused on stuff, it's really funny, isn't it? That, that people can go into a creative process to where you understand that sometimes you just have to walk away from the project, but it's hard to do that with other things in your life. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're working on a song or I'm working on a, a piece of art or something like that. And it's like sometimes you just go, if I keep working on this, it's not going to be better. It's just, you know, I'm just doing something to it. And you walk away, you give it a few days or weeks or months or whatever. And then you come back refreshed and you're like, you know what, this is okay. And then you work with whatever's in front of you, you know. It's so weird, though, how we have a hard time doing that in real life. Well, especially when it's something we desire. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we when it's really something that we desire that that is that we feel is somehow going to make our lives better. Yeah. It's a lot harder to just step away and say, Well, you know, you know, I'll come back to this and take a look at it again, you know, with a new you know Yeah. With a new outlook. You know, versus something that we're just happen to be working on. Yeah. Whatever it is. But it's, am Absolutely. it's amazing in life that how, how much difference yeah. that can make, you know, no matter what it is, if it's frustrating the heck out of you, you know, a lot of times you give, give some time to it, you know, give it a few hours or a day, you know, sleep on it, whatever, and wake up the next day. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you're like, okay, you know, your anger's subsided, the frustration and, uh, anxiety have yep. kind of gone by the wayside. And then you're like, okay. And then you can step back into it and, you know, it's, I mean, it is, it's, it's really crazy how things can go, um, when you just take a step back. Yeah. But step number five is modify your expectations and objectives. The final step is to modify your expectations and objectives. Um, modifying your expectations will help you see things more clearly and realistically. Modifying your objectives will come as a result of your adjusted expectations. Maybe you were initially reaching too high too quickly. A modified objective will provide you with a realistic target you can work towards. Then once you hit the target, you can then raise the bar higher next time around. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're trying to jump two hurdles. Maybe you need to jump <laughs> one hurdle at a time. Right. I've always believed in that kind of having like the essentially the long and the t short term goal. You know, mm -hmm. that like you said, you, you're not going to jump two at the same time. You know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. but you know, you had that small one and maybe the small one's working toward the, the big one, you know, like the big one for Heno, the big ones to be debt free. One of the small ones was pay off the dental bill. Yeah, you know? exactly. And one you're like, I cleared thing. one. Yep. I'm still working toward that other one. And, you know, mm. I think that helps a whole lot. It's why, like with me with to do list, I'll have, you know, like now to do list. And then I have like the, this has got to get done at some point to do list, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Cause if I put them all on one, it's, it's overwhelming, but you, otherwise yeah. you can break it into two and you'll have five on one and five on the other rather than looking at 10 or 12 things and go, there's no way and just not do anything. Well, some last minute tips on what to do when you're in that moment of disappointment. Number one, calm yourself. Okay, you're feeling incredibly disappointed. Things didn't pan out as you expected. As a result, it's easy to allow this disappointment to completely overwhelm your thought process. However, if you allow this to happen, then you can't work through this problem successfully or overcome the disappointment in the long run. So calm down. Mm -hmm. Distract yourself. Mm -hmm. Transform your physiology. The moment disappointment hits you, your physiology will likely change. Think for a moment about the time you're really excited about something. How did you move your body during those moments? How were you standing? Now think of a time we are incredibly disappointed about something. I bet your body was moving somewhat differently. Mm, there we go. Mm -hmm. So, disappointed? Stand up straight, shoulders back, and you will face the world. Yep. The disappointment is clouded in fog. Keep in mind that the feeling of disappointment may not be what you think it is. Disappointment can often result from a misunderstanding, from confusion, is often based upon your personal expectations and interpretations of the situation. Maybe you really have nothing to be disappointed about. 
All you need is to shift your perspective of the situation, and all of a sudden, what seemed unfortunate may in fact turn out to be your greatest opportunity. Transform your perspective. And remember, disappointment is only temporary. Don't demand perfection from yourself. Oh, you know, that's a great one. We didn't even touch on that. But man, Mm -hmm. you know, go back and go back and listen to our episode on perfection. Uh, because yeah. we, we talk about how it sets, it sets you up to fail so much. I didn't even think about that. That's, I'm glad that was in there though. Yep. Don't attempt to control the outcome. Man. Yeah, that's another great yeah, one. I don't <laughs> that a few times. Yeah. Yep. yep. What to do after the disappointment hits. Focus on the war, not the battles. Look for potential opportunities. Ask questions to gain clarity. And account for Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time, (laughs) all at once, and when you least expect it. So, yeah, it's pretty darn good. And the article goes on to do assimilate the concepts um, and how to, you know, put it together in a big map and a bunch of fun stuff. Mm. But... This is really a cool, cool website. I highly recommend checking it out. The, it's called the IQ Matrix, like I mentioned. And it talks about mind mapping. And uh, if something's really got you going, um, you can actually get a map of it made up where it talks about the different steps in how to do things and how to work your brain to, to make things make more sense and help to, to move past things. Hmm. So. Interesting. It's really, really, really cool. So, you know, one thing that that they kind of talk about that I'd like to throw in there with when you are disappointed, you know, it said look for what you can learn or blah blah blah. But look for what you've actually already accomplished. You know, that goes into gratitude list. Uh, yep. Ah, good point. You know, like, yes. When I walked onto that car lot to give them the deposit, I didn't see the car there. I'm like, it's probably been sold. Mm-hmm. turns out it had been sold and it was totally okay. You know, it's like, this is, this is sales. Somebody came in first. Yep. That's just the way it goes. Say, yep, exactly. Yep. And, yep. and it wasn't a waste of time because I'd made a connection. I'd done a lot of paperwork. They'd already figured out a lot of financing stuff for me and they know exactly what I'm looking for and at what price range I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. So th- it was not, it was not a wasted a waste of time. There was a lot of work that had already been done and that it was worth, you know, it was worth the time. It was all that kind of, you know, kind of stuff in there. And the one interesting thing that I had is, you know, I had that, that like they're talking about the physiological re- reaction. I definitely felt that, uh, you know, there's that, you can feel disappointment, you mm-hmm. know, in, in under your skin in a way. Uh, and one of the things I needed to do is because my instinct is to go back in and hammer even harder. Yeah. Start doing more research, yep. looking at, at other options, blah, blah, blah. I needed to actually not think about it for a while. I needed to put myself someplace completely different. Mm-hmm. And like it talked about, gain perspective. Yeah. Needed to walk away. And once I did, then I was able to kind of approach it from – uh, the idea of like, okay, on to the next step rather than how can I fix this disappointment? Yeah, because yeah. you could have went the other way and, and panicked and uh, essentially and been like in your head that goal that you have to achieve is I'm walking out here with a car. And you could yeah, have settled. And gotten something else. Exactly. You yeah. could have picked something else and then. Be happy with. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so the, the way the you did part it was, so was like, There's also a, like generally for – if we're actually paying attention and and bouncing things off of other people, and it doesn't matter what we're doing, whether we're trying to achieve something, whether we're just doing a job, you know, like okay, you know, I'm organizing this party and mm-hmm. I want it to go this way. If if we're doing everything inside of our own heads, we're more than likely it, it makes us more likely to uh, gl- you know uh, go over things that might have been like a little red flag. Your, your instincts aren't as, as sharp necessarily versus if we're bouncing ideas off of others, if we're including others and we're, and we're seeking help, they may see something and ask a question. You know, you 
might have had that little tickle in the back of your head. Totally right. And somebody just says something and you go, you know what? That was a concern of mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, hey, like for me with this car, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I was going to use a car example and be like, hey, you know, I love this car and, you know, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And you're going, then someone else be like, it's got a lot of miles on it. Like, have you, you that know, was exactly yeah, it. you know, and it's there like, was hey, a lot yeah, of yeah, miles but, on this car. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it was, and when we didn't get it, I went. That's okay because I had a little reservation. Yep. Something better will come along. Yeah. You know. Exactly, and that's you know once you go through the motions and go through the process. I mean, I'll openly admit, right before the phone, the the podcast, right before Brian and Hanno called and and got me into the the beginning of the podcast, I was finishing up a conversation with my husband where I pretty much told him about everything going on and said, I need a pep talk because I'm feeling really low and I'm feeling really crummy right now about this whole thing. And he did his job, you know, he did the best job he could, but by talking with you guys and talking through it on the the program and using the article that I found, I feel so much better about the whole situation. I actually feel optimistic at the thought. I started out feeling disappointed and, and down and ended up feeling optimistic about opportunities and different things I have going on in my life, which is amazing how by working the steps to going through and using your your support system and talking about things, you really can change your outlook and can change how you're feeling in the moment. Mm-hmm. So I just, I, we do it every week on this podcast and I always feel better after the podcast than I did before I started the podcast. That's the same thing and, that I had to say about therapy, yeah. essentially, you know, and and that's yeah. one of the reasons why I'm, uh, you know, an advocate of people going, e- even if you don't have a mental illness, sometimes just, or a group, you know, something along those lines, whatever fits you the best, you know, is, yes. is just sitting and talking with someone, especially p- talking with people, you know, can work sometimes, sometimes talking with people you don't know works better because yeah because yeah. you you don't feel judgment necessarily you know or you don't fear judgment i should say not feel it but fear it yeah. and uh you know so that that's why i've always been an advocate of this because again with mental illness especially depression the worst thing you can do is internalize you know let people know how you feel if someone doesn't like the fact that you tell people how you feel i mean you know don't be a jerk about it but you know like if you're disappointed, if you're upset, let people know, you know, like, oh, wow, you know, well, that sucks, but whatever. And it's like, don't hold this stuff in. Like, I know, you know, men, women, it doesn't matter. It's like, because it, all it does is when you hold it in, it just eats away at your insides. You know, it's like, get it out of your system because it's better. It's easier to get for move forward after you do, you know, other, <laughs> otherwise somebody like me, I'll sit and, you know, fester on it for, you know, three, four, five days. And there's nothing productive from that, you know, like, you know, you can learn a little bit, but you know, if it's kind of like athletes, you know, we mentioned earlier, if someone makes a mistake or something doesn't go right, sometimes they'll just watch the film once because they want to see where it went wrong. Once they see that they're done with it. Like they don't watch it over and over. Some do, but a lot of them don't because if they do that, it eats at your confidence. It eats at your you know, and, and like you said earlier, you know, when you step into anything, you need a level of confidence, whether it's just your work or, or it's you, you play sports for a profession or whatever it is, it's, you need to have some, or, you know, even step into buy, like, you know, buying a car. If you go in there, I'm just going to get the worst thing, man, man, you know, go in there like you're Eeyore, you're going to walk out with a <laughs> shitty car, excuse my language, you yep. know, because they're going to see you a mile away and be like, here you go. <laughs> Sucker. Yeah, exactly. Like so, whatever we throw at him. Yeah. So again, don't don't this keep it inside. Desperate. Yeah. If you're feeling disappointment, you know, uh, find someone to share, you know, share that with, and and explain to them, you know, even if you just say, hey, look, you know, 
I need to, like Heno said earlier, when you thanked us for letting you download, you know, it's like, even if it's just that, like you tell them ahead of time, it's like, look, I just need to dump some stuff out of me, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the expectation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I've got a lot of processing I think to do in the next couple of days and I'm sure I will. I'll have to spend some time with it and process it and I'll probably go back to this article and, and uh, reread it on my own and, and do some more work on it. Mm. But definitely it's, I think there's some really great tips and I can't believe how dead on you were with some of your stories, Heno. <laughs> I mean, you really were like nail in the head. So this was a very timely episode, I think, for all of us. It really was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Brian, I know you have your own experiences and mm -hmm. stuff with this and, um, in maybe not a specific situation at this exact moment, like with Hanno and I, but I know that, uh, that you've definitely had your share of working through disappointments. Yeah. And so. Well, with that being said, I think it's about that time, guys. Mm -hmm. Anything else we want to add to the article? No, I think. Uh, nope, we're good. Nope. The article will be available in the show notes if anyone wants to read it also. Absolutely. And with, with that, if you want to continue the conversation, you can contact me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life, and that's Jen with a G. And uh, you can contact the show at the crazy life podcast dot weebly dot com is our website. Our email is the crazy life podcast at outlook dot com. And you, Heno, how can they reach you? Find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Look for me on Facebook or just grab us through one of our crazy life links or locations. Absolutely. And you, Brian? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, you can also check the show out. Uh, on Twitter to see when new episodes post at um, where to go. I lost it at the crazy life pod. Uh, if you want to check the other podcast out that I'm on, which is salty language, it's at salty underscore language um, or at salty language.com. And again, that, that show is very not safe for work. Um, our, but very funny. what was, Oh yeah. Our <laughs> Facebook group um, is facebook.com slash groups slash crazy life pod or slash crazy life podcast. Sorry. Um, one thing I want to say about that also is, you know, I mentioned stuff being in the show notes. If, um, if you're using whatever, however you're getting your podcast, if you can't click the link like directly there while you're listening, uh, the links are always on our Facebook group page. So you can always go there and check the links out each week. Um, uh, forgot what I was going to say next. Oh, we're part of the Tangibound Network, which can be found at tangiboundnetwork.com. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you listen through iTunes, uh, please, you know, stop stop by and leave us a review if you would. And also make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already because that helps us. Uh, both things help us out um, in the visibility uh, on iTunes. Uh, and then if you're using, you know, anything you, else you're using, you know, if it's got a like or a share button, please, please use that for the same reasons. And, uh, yeah, that's all that stuff. Uh, so next is, you know, we're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals. Uh, the show should not be seen as a replacement for therapy. Uh, and as always, we ask, you know, please don't self-diagnose. If you think you need some help, you know, uh, get a hold of a doctor um, and, you know, get a course of action that way. Um, or there's all sorts of, you know, counseling available, uh, out there. If you're feeling, uh, suicidal, uh, or planning it just anywhere in the process, you know, it doesn't have to be end stage, but if you're anywhere in that process, you know, we've talked about support systems here and up quite a bit tonight. So reach out to somebody, you know, a friend, family member, or whoever it is. Uh, or, you know, call 911, tell them you're having a mental health emergency, go to a hospital. Um, you know, there, there's links, uh, if you need places to call, like the suicide prevention hotline number and some others listed in our Facebook group. There's a, a page that says notes, I believe. Uh, or if you want it, contact one of us and we can, you know, forward the link or, or links to you. Um, but again, you know, please don't act on anything. You know, uh, there's help out there if you want it. 
Absolutely. All of those are great things. And everybody, please keep safe. And um, one more thing before we go, there is one big disappointment for a lot of people out there right now, um, which was the current election. So um, a lot of people are very excited and I'm not really going to go. I don't want to go into politics. I just want to make sure that everyone takes care of themselves, take care of everybody else, and know that there is opportunity out there, regardless of what our fears are for our future or what our goals are and our expectations are for our future. There is positives to be looked at. Um, use this article. Use the stuff we talked about today. Really work to put things in perspective and know that there is good stuff happening as well as stuff that may be disappointing for you. So that being said, keep breathing, wiggle your toes, and have a great week.